like a team mentality, team basketball wins games. So um, is there one person for you that stands out for their unselfishness and sort of team first mentality? And so who do you think that would be and like what are the reasons for that? Uh, you mean from the Boomers? Yeah, from the Boomers or from the NBL, like just who you played with that sort of stood out for you? Yeah, um, in the NBL, uh, Mika Vakona was one with, for me that I was lucky enough to play with um, when I was younger and before I really appreciated all that sort of stuff and just some of the things that he could and can still do. Um, you know, they, they weren't scoring the basketball. It was it was uncanny the, 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 the amount of times he would get a game-winning rebound or come up with a game-winning steal or something like that, things that don't go on the stat sheet, but it's a skill and to be able to put yourself in that position and be relentless and aggressive to go and get the ball at a time when it was needed um, and do all the things that the team needed. So Mika was one for me that, that always stands out for me. Yeah. Delhi's another one who prepares amazingly well. You know, he'll be the first to admit he's not the most explosive. He's not the most athletic. He's not um, the most gifted person in the world, but he prepares um, better than most people I've seen. He'll watch tape hours and hours and hours on end of tape of oppositions just to try and pick up something that he think he might be able to exploit in the game the next day and, you know, constantly taking care of his body and, um, you know, will just literally play until he faints or passes out um, for the team, for the country. So much respect to Delhi for that. Yeah, I'll pop yeah. in there. Sick, Ed. Like, the Delhi had that one game in, with the Cleveland, didn't he, in the finals where he had to go get put on a drip or something? Yeah, uh, so that, I mean, yeah, it's, it's that, that's not uncommon for him to work himself to be like that. Yeah, yeah. What would be your advice? Like, basketball's a game, and as kids get to Eddie's age, where the ninth, 10th, 11th man on the bench, you know, I mean, might not see um, the minutes that, the, you know, players one to eight to, what would be advice to kids that are ninth, 10th, 11th? They probably assume that you've never been in that role, but I imagine there are teams where you've had that as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was me at the Olympics. That was me for some games at the World Cup. Um, you know, I've been at NBA Summer Leagues where that, that's been me. And um, earlier in my career, that was, that was me. Um, now, Am I not a good basketballer because I didn't play many minutes at my first Olympics? No, it's not the case. It's just sometimes teams are built in certain ways that coaches feel are the, the best way for them to be successful. The best thing I can say is enjoy it. Immerse yourself in any way you can help, whether it be waving a towel, getting a towel to someone, getting a water bottle, um, being the first off the bench to encourage them in and, and pick up things that you can help and say, hey, look, you know, he's every time he goes behind his back, he's he's loose with his left hand. So you, there might be an opportunity. You have to stay engaged in the game and read and learn. And as if you were playing, you have to use it as an opportunity to get better and and stay engaged because that is a skill as well. And you know, um, if I was a a wanker and wouldn't shake the towel, and I, I might not have made the Olympic team. So because I was willing to accept that role and. Um, want my teammates to exceed, maybe that's a reason why I'm an Olympian. So you, you don't want to throw that out the window because you're not happy about not playing. Yeah, yeah. Last question, Ed. Okay, so on like the...